Joining us now in studio is Jerry Connolly. Gerald Connolly is a member of the U.S. House of Representatives. He's a Democrat from Virginia. He is up for re-election next Tuesday. Congressman Connolly, thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure to join you again. Connor. Also joining us in studio is Keith Fimian. He is the Republican candidate for the U.S. House of Representatives for the seat representing Virginia's 11th Congressional District. Keith Fimian, thank you very much for joining us. Coach, nice to be here. Thank you. Let's start off by clearing the air. If you watch television in the Washington region, chances are you've already seen dozens of ads attacking the candidates in this race, many of which are funded by groups outside of the campaigns. So can each of you take a second to talk about this? Because many of the ads are being run by the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee on your behalf, presumably, Congressman Connolly. Others are being run by the American Action Network on your behalf, Keith Fimian. If you were asked to put your signature, if you were asked to say, I approve of this ad, which of those ads running by the, starting with you, Fimian, American Action Network, would you not put your signature on? Well, I haven't seen the second ad. The first one talks about the enormous burden that Congressman Connolly and others like him have saddled our children with. Um, but the ad that um, I'm attacked with, with, I'm not sure who did it. I'm, I own a home inspection company that's nationwide that I started, we are the most successful company in our industry, 10 times larger than the next closest. And I'm made to sound like a, a scandal monger. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, these attacks. What I've tried to do with my uh, commercials with Congressman Connolly is simply point out the things that he's done so that voters know. But these but attacks how about the, on me how about are... The, how about the, <clears throat> the ads that are run presumably on your behalf, even though they're not run by your campaign? Have, Do you approve of them all? The one that I saw that had the children saddled with backpacks seemed to me to be very good and very fair. Uh, I have not seen the second one. I understand there's a second one out. Congressman Connolly. Well, um, I'm... I voted for the Disclose Act, and uh, my view is that, frankly, if there are going to be independent expenditures, uh, we ought to know who's paying for them. Uh, the ad that my opponent said he likes is an anonymous ad from an outside group. Nobody knows who's funding it. They put $1.7 million into that ad, uh, and we don't know who they are, and I think that's wrong. Um, I think Citizens United is one of the most destructive decisions any Supreme Court has ever made, and it is going to upend our political process, and uh, I think it's a direct threat to democracy. But it also allows others to put ads in your favor, attacking your opponent that you don't necessarily have to approve of. Which of those ads would you approve of or not approve of? Well, uh, frankly, <laughs> unlike what my opponent said, um, I think the uh, my party's ad, that they've put up, which is an independent expenditure, which I hadn't seen until they put it up, um, actually goes through what is a very different narrative about how Mr. Fimian's company got founded and what his partner said about it. Uh, and some of some of the history in terms of lawsuits and shady business practices and so forth. Uh, that's a matter of public record. His partner actually went on the public record. These are facts that were actually cited by my opponent's Republican opponent uh, during his primary um, up to uh, June 8th. So I'm not going to question the facts of that, but frankly, I think we're all better served <clears throat> if just the two candidates are the ones responsible for whatever ads run on radio or television and everybody else stays out. How do you feel about that, Keith? Well, this, Mr. Connolly wasn't in favor of this two years ago when all sorts of organizations were hitting me on his behalf. Um, it's this newfound uh, zeal to, to, to correct things. Um, these ads point out very unfairly... Um, like, for example, my company has been sued a number of times. We're a home inspection company. We've done 2 million inspections, and in 24 years, we've been sued 40 times. Not something I'm happy about, but the percentage is very, very small, and it makes me sound like I'm some failed businessman operating some shady company. That is not the case at all. And unfortunately, as is the case with many partners early on, um, uh, one of the partners I started my company with, my brother and another fellow, um, you know, just wanted to take the company in a different direction. And um, we parted, and I was surprised that he said anything. He, he wasn't publicly on the record, but he voted for me in my last three-year board term two years ago. So it's... Uh we haven't even put out the phone numbers yet, and calls are coming in. The number is 800-433-8850. If the lines are busy, you can go to our website, kojoshow.org, raise a question or make a comment there. Send us a tweet at kojoshow or an email to kojo at wamu.org. Tom? 
Uh, gentlemen, this is a, an extraordinary election nationwide with the Democrats facing a loss of a number of seats. Uh, depending on what your view of it is, it's as little as a few, 20 or so, it's to as many as 40 for the House Republicans to take control, to as many as 50, 60 or more. But the, the viciousness of the ads that are being done on your behalf, or in some cases candidates are doing for themselves, I want to try to restore a little bit of civility. And I would like for you, Congressman, and you, Mr. Fimian, to say one thing nice about each other. You go, go first, Mr. Connolly. We only have so much time left. No, this, is, <laughs> this is a 10-second answer, probably. <laughs> um, but is there something you can say nice about him just to I, kind of clear the air, like for a breeze I, or something? I believe that my opponent, uh, uh, while I, we don't agree, um, I believe he is a sincerely motivated person. Okay. And I recognize Mr. that. Mr. Fimian, say yeah. something nice about the congressman. Well, Congress. listen, I think we're both after the same end. I, I, we want what's best for our country and our children. And it, it, the way we go about these things is dramatically different. Okay, that's pretty nice. Is that it? Now, you can leave if that's all you're here for. No, I want to Join about that demonstration to restore sanity or whatever it's called. <laughs> the economy still needs a kickstart. People are having a hard time finding work. Both of you have expressed concerns about more spending and stimulus. What ideas do you think should be on the table when we talk about getting people back to work? And more specifically, what ideas do you have to offer, Congressman Connolly? Well, again, this isn't theoretical for me. Um, I was very proud to support the small business bill that just uh, got signed into law that creates a new $30 billion fully paid for uh, loan facility to make credit flow again to small businesses. They're the engine of economic growth. They're the engine of job creation. And the big, one of the biggest problems small businesses have faced in the recession uh, the Great Recession was the lack of access to capital. Uh, and if they're going to hire and if they're going to be able to expand, they've got to have access to capital. And frankly, the banks weren't doing that. And so uh, I think that's a very important first step. Um, I think there has to be more predictability and certainty in the economy, and that's why I support a, at least a temporary extension of the tax cuts so that people can make their plans over the next year. All the two. tax cuts? I, would, I favor the uh, temporary extension of all of the tax cuts, and I'll tell you why, Tom. We just saw the economic performance today. It was 2%. That's too fragile. There's a risk of raising taxes on any income group across the board right now of that further contracting. We cannot afford you to take the You differ with the administration I on take, that issue. I have, administration all year with, long, I have publicly stated that I disagree with the president and with my party's leadership on that issue. Keith Femian. It's for convenience, Kojo. Mr. Connolly said he was against the tax cuts, and had he been in Congress in 2001 and 2003, he would have voted against them. Now he's for them because he's behind in the polls. He's going to be against them on November 3rd. Look, the single most important thing government can do to create jobs and grow the economy is eliminate uncertainty. Uh, Mr. Connolly now knows that because of our debates, but he doesn't understand it completely. The fact is, you have to reduce this uncertainty so people are going to be willing to invest. American corporations today are sitting on 30% more cash than they were two years ago at the start of the recession. Why? Because they're afraid to go forward. If I don't know if my, if I think my taxes are going up, if I think my health care costs are going up, my energy costs, I'm going to sit on the sidelines. And the reason is margins in the private sector are so thin, you can't afford to take that chance. You can't afford to gamble. Um, Mr. I, Connolly says he was in favor of the small business, $30 billion uh, extension of credit to, to stimulate growth. What he didn't say is he's voted for $3 trillion in new spending. Now, Kojo, the 2007 budget was $2.9 trillion in spending for the whole government. He's voted for $3 trillion in new spending in the short time he's been in Congress. What that does to the markets is nothing less than royal. Kojo, I'm, I'm hoping we're not going to allow filibusters here. Um, they're not allowed on the floor. We do of the allow responses. That's right. Why well, can I finish? Well, what is, is it? Uh, well, that's a long list of uh, uh, trillions of dollars. How much of that is? What would you cut if you, uh, uh, a lot of that would be defense spending? I would guess, given that we have no, two listen, wars. I, Tom, I go back to 2007 level spending. The budget balances itself by 2019. What I would do is take advantage of the federal audits that suggest that 20, 122 pro, 22 programs could be eliminated and save 122 billion dollars. Um, that uh, for programs that uh, did not accomplish their purpose, 92 billion could be saved by eliminating improper payments. These are annual numbers. 60 billion eliminating waste, fraud, and abuse in Medicare. 35 billion in waste, fraud, and I abuse know in healthcare. I know Mr. Connolly is going to respond, but a lot of people will say, you know, we didn't hear Republicans complaining about budget deficits during the two Bush administrations. I know when the deficits were really going up. I wouldn't it hear. would appear that whenever Democrats are in the White House is the only time that Republicans think that deficits. No. Are 
how I would listen. You I, I look. We, the Republicans in Congress at that time uh, did the same thing that the Democrats are doing now. Only now it's on steroids. Why it's not? All, out, it's too much spending. I, I, I've been intrigued. That people say we're going to throw out the the incumbents. But I don't hear people saying let's throw out the Republicans and the and the Democrats unless it's a few Tea Party candidates. Listen, there I mean, are members of my own party that have like engaged in this out? kind of spending that, that that should go as well. Look, we are behaving Including fiscally speaker irresponsibly. If he, if he becomes speaker, look without comment. without commenting on individuals, we are overspending at a rate that simply cannot be sustained. Everyone knows that, and, and my party was guilty. Congressman Connolly, you stand accused of being a part of that three trillion dollars in overspending. Well, you know, I, I just think it's nonsense. Uh, <laughs> you know, when Bill Clinton was leaving the White House, he left us with the fourth consecutive year of budget surpluses. It took eight brief years of Republican Congresses and George W. Bush to take a, a projected $5.7 trillion surplus that would have entirely paid off the federal debt and turned it into a $6.4 trillion deficit because of three main things, unfunded wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, an unfunded new entitlement program, and the Bush tax cuts entirely unpaid for. Uh, one of the things I certainly am trying to do in Congress as a member of the Budget Committee is restore some fiscal sanity and discipline, but we're, we're in the midst of a fragile recovery. And uh, one of the biggest problems in this economy, quite frankly, is lack of demand. And so we're trying to stimulate the demand uh, while also dealing long term uh, with the red ink that got generated in previous Congresses. Nobody's hands are clean.